To understand the incredible growth New York City has seen over the past few decades, all you have to do is look at the L train. Each weekday, 400,000 riders use the L, which travels through the Canarsie Tunnel under the East River, connecting Manhattan and Brooklyn. At all hours of the day, people depend on the L for work, for school, for fun. Ridership has more than tripled since 1990. In fact, the L Line alone is the 10th largest subway in North America, only slightly behind the entire BART system in San Francisco. 25 years ago, nobody could have predicted such growth, or the kind of growth we've seen on this line. It's fantastic for New York City. But it makes our job of repairing the Canarsie Tunnel, which was heavily damaged during Superstorm Sandy, even more difficult. But repairing the tunnel and keeping our riders safe has to be done. If we don't have a strategy for a planned closure, we risk unplanned closures and uncertainty for our riders. Those are risks we can't afford. Superstorm Sandy flooded nine of the system's 14 under-river tunnels with salt water, which is extremely corrosive. Six of the nine tunnels have already been repaired. Clark Street will be done this June. Of the two remaining tunnels, Rutgers suffered relatively minor damage. So rebuilding Canarsie is critical. Canarsie was hit especially hard, with seven million gallons of salt water flooding in from the East River. The damage was catastrophic. In the entire history of the subway, only the damage we suffered on 9-11 on the one line was greater than what we're currently facing with Canarsie. The Canarsie Tunnel consists of two tubes made of cast iron and lined with concrete. Each tube carries one track. During peak times, 40 trains an hour go through the tunnel. On an average weekday, 225,000 riders travel through these tubes. Sandy flooded both tubes, damaging every part of the tunnel. The most devastating damage occurred in something we call a duct bank. These are concrete structures that provide a protected pathway for the miles of cables and circuits necessary for communications, power, and safety of the trains. The salt water from the East River flooded these duct banks. The silt dried out inside the structure, hardening like cement and destabilizing the duct bank from within. So we can't pull out the cables to replace them, and we can't hang new cables on the duct bank because it's literally falling into the tracks. We've done some interim repairs, but those are only a temporary fix, and we can't just keep patching. We have to rip out and rebuild all 37,000 feet of duct bank. There's simply no other option. While the Canarsie Tunnel is still safe for passengers, what we're trying to avoid is unplanned shutdowns due to further deterioration. Or worse, an emergency situation that puts our customers at risk.